All right, so now we're going to cover masses, uh, both malignant and benign tumors, um, in no particular order. Uh, we'll start, I guess, with some pediatrics and then move on from there. Um, first, we got uh, mesoblastic nephroma, um, which is also known as renal hematoma. Much like everything in medicine, it has two names. This is present usually in the first few months of life. Uh, some of them are detected prenatally. Metastasis is rare, but has been reported in lungs, brain, and bone, and it has a good prognosis. Image-wise, it's indistinguishable from Wilms tumor. You know to suggest uh, mesoblastic nephroma due to age, whereas you know Wilms is from anywhere at five years, usually from three to four years. Um, this is presented uh, in infancy. So then we got Wilms tumor, aka nephroblastoma. It's the most common pediatric renal malignancy. 87% of all renal tumors are Wilms. The mean year of distribution is three to four years old. It can be seen later on in pediatric life, but it's uh, less common. Bilateral in four to 13% of cases. So I'll present to you a few. So this first one, uh, you have a, a Wilms tumor. It's on the left. Um, you can see it. It's, uh, the tumor is invading the IVC. It's also invading the right renal vein. If you can see that in the, the right upper image, uh, the left upper and left lower images are pretty much the same with and without color, not very vascular. And then you have the C CT on the bottom right showing the large tumor invading the IVC. So here's another kid, um, bilateral hydronephrosis. There's some free fluid up by the, the spleen. Um, when we look down in the pelvis, uh, lower abdomen, we saw a large 11.2 uh, centimeter tumor which at first was thought to be a neuroblastoma. Um, biopsy confirmed that it was a Wilms tumor. This is a um, Wilms tumor, an extra renal Wilms tumor, which are not very common. This next case is a kid, he developed bilateral Wilms tumors. He had a large one on the right uh, and a smaller one on the upper pole of the, of the left kidney. He had um, chemotherapy uh, a few months later. Uh, the bottom images are a few months later. You can see the tumors had shrunk in size. Um, and he, he eventually had a right nephrectomy and a partial left nephrectomy, and he's doing well. All right, moving on. Multilocular cystic nephroma. They're predominantly cystic and septated. They're rare. Uh, they typically present in the fifth to sixth decade of life and affect females more than males. Here you have uh, an image of a large cystic nephroma. And then the CT, you can see is a very large tumor. This one arrow here is pointing to regular renal tissue. And the other, arrow, the black arrow is sh um, showing the cyst invading the renal pelvis. Moving on to renal cell carcinoma. This is the most common renal cancer in adults. It can be seen in pediatrics, but typically after 11 years of age. It can be solid. It can be solid and cystic. Um, have variable echogenicity. Uh, the tumor may inv invade the right, uh, the renal vein and IVC, much like a Wilms tumor. Here's four different renal cell carcinomas. Actually, I'm sorry, three. Uh, the left upper is very hyperechoic and can give uh, the appearance of maybe an angiomyolipoma. The second upper one is has cystic spaces. Um, it may almost look like a uh, multilocular cystic nephroma, just less cystic. Uh, the bottom left is a hypoechoic, heterogeneous renal cell carcinoma. And the bottom right turned out to be um, a neuroblastoma. Uh, it at first was thought to be a renal cell carcinoma, but then it turned out to be a neuroblastoma. Neuroblastomas usually arise from immature nerve cells. Uh, they're very commonly seen in pediatrics uh, arising from the adrenal gland. Next is angiomyolipoma. Um, angiomyolipomas are tumors made up of blood vessels, angio, muscle, tissue, myo, and fat tissue, lipoma. Um, they are benign. They're usually hyperechoic. Um, they're very common in tuberous sclerosis patients. As I said before, we get, um, we have a lot of patients with tuberous sclerosis and almost all of them have angiomyolipomas and renal cysts and sometimes stones as well. Um, the, some, some complications may arise if they get too large and bleed. Um, you can have intratumoral bleeding um, that would show up as hypoechoic areas in an ultrasound. Um, this is one of our patients that has tuberous sclerosis. You can see his kidney is just filled with angiomyolipomas, large ones, uh, medium-sized ones, very tiny ones, 
And on the right, you can see a CT showing all those angiomyolipomas. This next one is um, also a tuberous sclerosis patient. You can see the liver there. Um, the gain or the TGCs could be uh, could have been increased a little bit to show the liver parenchyma better. Um, in the superior pole of that right kidney, there is a large angiomyolipoma, and then you can see small, tiny echogenicities all around the kidneys. Those are smaller angiomyolipomas. Okay, renoleomyoma. This is another benign process. They're usually found incidentally. Benign, like I said. They arise from the smooth muscle of the kidney, and they're, they can be indistinguishable from renal cell carcinoma. But upon biopsy, they, they would be uh, considered benign. So that would be good news for the patient, thinking that they have a renal cell carcinoma, and they have instead of leomyoma. Lastly is nephroblastomatosis. So it's defined as a uh, clusters of embryonic metanephric cells that collect in the kidney. Um, they can give rise to approximately 30 to 40 percent of Wilms tumors. There's two pathologic subtypes: um, periloba rest, which is 90 percent of them, and intraloba rest, which is the other 10 percent. And these are the intraloba rest are the ones that are can be more associated with Wilms tumors. You can have a focal renal mass or a diffuse nephromegaly. Um, ultrasound appearance to show just enlarged kidneys, um, hyperechoic. They kind of have a similar appearance uh, to uh, leukemic infiltration of the kidneys. And here in this case, you can see both kidneys are, are massive. I'm sorry, I don't know why I raised my voice just now. All right, my ultrasound peeps, I really hope you enjoyed this quick one. Feel free to hit the like and subscribe button and also click the notification bell. Thank you.